Hi, I'm Tony Northrup, and today we're in the studio to give an overview of macro photography. Macro photography is general close-up photography. Now, I'll show you what I see everyone try to do with their cameras. You want to take a nice close-up picture of a flower, and they'll get nice and close, close enough to fill the frame, and then you try to focus, and the camera just doesn't focus. Um, maybe you actually take a picture, but it ends up completely blurry. That's because you're too close. Each lens has a minimum focusing distance, and if you try to focus closer than that minimum distance, the camera simply won't be able to focus. So I'll show you how close this particular lens can actually focus. So as you can see, it's not too far away, but it's not that close either. What you really want for a flower picture is something that just fills the frame and shows the detail of individual petals. And if you want to get that close, you're going to have to go into macro photography. Fortunately, it doesn't have to be that expensive. I've got three different types of macro photography equipment here. Um, the easiest and cheapest is called a diopter. And this is like a big magnifying glass that you screw onto the end of a lens just like a filter. My favorite way to make any lens a macro lens is to use an extension tube. Extension tubes are simply spacers. They simply move your lens farther away from the camera body. They go in between the lens and the camera body and they attach just like a lens would. So here I'm going to put this 20 millimeter extension tube onto this camera body and that will decrease the lens's minimum focusing distance. Now I'll take a quick test shot to see how much closer I can get now. As you can see with the help of the extension tube that's close enough to fill the entire frame with just the center of the flower. If I wanted to get even closer, I could add more extension tubes. Like diopters, as I add extension tubes, I also lose infinity focus. So right now I wouldn't be able to focus on something even 10 feet away. I do gain that close-up ability though. For those of you who really get into macro photography, a macro lens is almost a requirement. Macro lenses are dedicated lenses for getting really, really close up. Now, lots of lenses claim to be macro. In fact, this is one of those lenses, but they don't get to what they call one-to-one -one magnification. One-to-one -one magnification allows you to fill the frame with something the same size as your image sensor, something about this big. Um, macro lenses do that without adding extension tubes or diopters. They also allow autofocus the whole time, and they allow infinity focus right from macro settings. So I'll attach this macro lens and we can see just how close it can get. So you can tell a couple of things from that picture. One, I can get really close and show the finest details in that flower. Um, but two, you'll notice the depth of field is very, very shallow. As you might have learned from chapter four in my book, Stunning Digital Photography, as you get closer to a subject, the depth of field gets more and more shallow, and that comes to an extreme level with macro photography. So again, taught in chapter four, you can solve that by using a higher f-stop number. But when you use a higher f-stop number, your shutter speed goes down. Uh, and in fact, it'll go down far enough that you won't be able to handhold the lens very well. For that, you'll need to use a tripod. The tripod will hold it steady and allow you to use a high f-stop number. Now, my technique in macro focusing when I want to get as close as possible is to set my lens to manual focus and then move it manually to the minimum focusing distance. Then I move either the camera or the subject closer to each other until the subject is in focus. So now I'll take a shot at f22, which is this lens's maximum f-stop number. As you can hear, that got a shutter speed of a second and a half. Definitely need it on a tripod for that. So f22 was good enough to get sharp depth of field throughout that particular picture. But that one's a fairly easy picture because the flower is parallel to the plane of focus. It's parallel to the digital camera sensor. A more interesting picture would be to have the flower tilted at an angle. To get the entire flower in focus now, however, I'll need an extremely deep depth of field that would cover the entire 
distance from the closest edge of the flower to the farthest edge. So I'll take another picture at the lens's minimum focusing distance. As you can see, even at f22, I can't get the entire flower sharp. What you can do instead is use a technique called image stacking, where you take multiple pictures, focusing on different parts of the flower each time, and then combine them in post-processing. I'll follow up with the second video to do that. One last thing I want to cover is the use of a ring flash. A ring flash is a flash that's specialized for macro photography. A ring flash attaches to the front of a lens, usually a macro lens, and lights the subject evenly. Because a ring flash is mounted to the front of a lens, you don't have to worry about the lens casting a shadow. However, the ring flash provides this like very bright, shadowy light that um, doesn't always look so appealing. So it's good if you just want to document a subject and you need to handhold it, um, but it's not all that great for creative types. So I'll take another picture of the flower just to show you what the ring flash looks like. The ring flash lit the flower nicely and that would allow me to use a higher f-stop number and therefore get more in focus. Uh, however, the lighting is not beautiful. Ring flashes are important if you need to take a picture of a moving subject like a butterfly or an insect because you won't be able to use a tripod and it can be difficult to chase the subject down. So this was for chapter 12 of my book, Stunning Digital Photography. For more information like this, uh, check out the book. I have many videos like this embedded right in there, uh, many of which are exclusive to the book. You can get the book right now on amazon.com. If you like this video, click subscribe up above to see more and click like down below. Thanks. What are you laughing about? You're like, just a little weird <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>